Welcome to this You Train introductory video. My name is Nezana and I'm a trainer. And in this video, we will be exploring the role and definition of a trainer, as well as how it differs from other roles in our field. Being active um, in delivering training in the international youth work field, you will probably be referred to in many different roles and names. And in fact, you might even call yourself differently. Maybe a speaker or a coach or a teacher or a facilitator, educator, trainer. And in fact, most of these different roles will be activated at some point in your work with participants. For example, you might find yourself in the role of a speaker when you are delivering an input about a relevant theory for your training course. Or you might be moderating a panel of experts who are sharing experience and their practice to your group of learners. Or you might be coaching individuals or smaller groups when they have a practical task in your training course. Anyway, we will be focusing on the role of a trainer because in some ways that's the one that is encompassing all of the others. So who is a trainer then? Well, in simplest term, trainer is a facilitator of learning in a training context. Facilitator? That's yet another word. Well, Latin word for easy is facilis, which means that facilitation is then an act of making something easier. Now in our context, facilitator makes it easier for the group of participants to go through the process of learning and self-discovery. Now, easy might not be the first word that comes into your mind when you think about learning. And in that, you would be completely right. When we say easy, we imply easier to learn and not necessarily easy learning. Often making it easier means challenging people to get out of their comfort zone, to experience something that stretches their understanding and abilities and helps them to gain insights through this process. The role of a trainer in this process is to support participants to go through these challenges and to get to their learning outcomes. If you're wondering if there is another explanation for the facilitator, wonder no more, there is. A facilitator is someone who facilitates discussions and decision-making processes among the participants. And in this, facilitator doesn't employ any specific training methodologies, but rather supports participants in their journey to get to their objectives. And in this narrow sense, facilitator is yet another role that a trainer can play. But back to the trainer. If we are clear with understanding this role as a facilitator of learning, we still need to understand what is a training context. In the youth field, a training aims to empower young people by enabling them to develop their competences, which are consisted of knowledge, skills, attitudes and behaviors for their personal and professional life. And in order to ensure empowering learning environments, a trainer needs to be able to provide safety, to minimize the risks as much as possible, and to keep the ethical boundaries. These are some of the aspects to be taken into consideration when being in the role of a trainer. But is there an overview of what a person needs in order to be a trainer? Well, trainer in a non-formal education field is a relatively new profession, and therefore the definition and understanding of the role varies across the sector. The same goes for the recommended educational pathways and competences needed to be a trainer. Still, we can turn to one solid example of a competence framework, which was developed by Salto Youth Training and Cooperation Resource Center and a number of international experts. The ETS competence model for trainers currently defines seven competence areas. Understanding and facilitating individual and group processes, learning to learn, designing educational programs, cooperating successfully in teams, communicating meaningfully with others, intercultural competence, and being civically engaged. Under these seven competence areas, there are 39 competences and even more specific criteria, which includes knowledge, skills, attitudes, and behaviors. This does not mean that in order for you to be a trainer, you need to have all of them fully developed, because that would mean that you would be a super trainer. And to our knowledge, there isn't one or at least not yet. But it means that you can use this model for self-assessment of your competences. You can also ask for feedback from your participants, colleague trainers, contractors, to provide you with their view. You can then use this comprehensive assessment for identifying your strengths and potentially weaknesses. And then you can plan your further professional development in order to develop or further strengthen certain competence areas. Because just like in any other professions, if not even more, a trainer never stops learning. And this adds another important role to a trainer, the one of a learner. Many participants in training activities are wondering how does one become a trainer? And like in many different aspects of this profession, the answer is rather ambiguous. But what can be common in all the different pathways is precisely a trainer being a continuous learner. 
In its commitment uh, to professional development of others, a trainer needs to be committed to their own professional development and be a lifelong learner. One's own curiosity for learning and development will often be their strongest assets in supporting the curiosity of others. Thanks for watching and if you are curious, you can find more videos on our YouTube channel. U-Train is co-funded by the Erasmus Plus program of the European Union. For more videos on non-formal education, please check out our channel and subscribe.